something like that, five, ten minutes while you sort your camera out, get your scales, get everything ready, straight up on the mat, deal with him, and away he goes. Just gives you a little bit of breathing space. Right, it's quite important on these sort of waters that are well stocked. You know, if you get a bite, especially when the fish are shoaled up like they are at the moment, uh, to get a rig out there as soon as possible on the same spot, because there's always a chance of another bite straight away. Might just add a little shoal of them move over you, and you want to get it straight back in position. So I'm just going to pop a, another little yellow one on out, replace the lead, and whack it straight back out there. Right, for anyone that's spent a fair amount of time sitting on a bed chair like this looking out, they know how painful your back can get. Just sat hunched over all the time, but at the moment I'm as comfy as, because I've got my little bed mate. Just sits on top of the bed, adjustable like a deck chair, three positions, and just supports your back. And most importantly, stops you sinking down into the bed chair and supports your lower section of your back. So you can sit there all day, totally comfortable staring out of the lake. Lovely. Right, let's get him back out there. Although I'm fishing at maximum range and not clipped up, I've still got three far bank markers so I know the direction he's going in. This is toward that, towards that big stand of trees in the distance there. It's always important to pick a high, a high bank marker for a back marker because when it gets dark, obviously anything on the bank that's got trees behind it, you're not going to see. So I always go for treetops and pylons and anything on the skyline. That's the one. few more out there. It's getting all the lines sunk down here because quite a crosswinds now picked up. I don't want it to bow out and then sink down behind weed or bars. So keep a direct line on him. When I'm fishing with mono, also also take always take the stretch out of it. If you fish with too tight a line, uh, you don't get a very good indication. So although the bobbins are right at the top, there's actually no stretch left in the line. I just peel it off until I can feel that it's it's not slack, but it's not taut. There he is, ready to go. Right then, Dave, uh, it's not something that I'm used to seeing you with, but obviously you're using a pod today. What's that all about? Yeah. Um, no, it's not something I use an awful lot, but it's something that I always keep in the motor. Um, I mean, it, the whole thing, although it looks like quite a big unit there, all packs down into this little bag, which I keep behind the seat in the car. Right. Um, and it's handy if you turn up and you've got a swim like this, you know, you, especially if you're going to a lake you don't know. Mm. Um, I've come up and stuck in the past. past I went to um, a lake in France. Uh, and the swim that I'd chosen, there was just no way you were going to get a bank stick oh, in. No. Didn't have a pod with me. It was it was a nightmare. You know, oh, you wow. end up with a bank stick at this angle and one yeah. at this angle, and the whole setup's wobbly and terrible. So it's perfect for that, and it's, it's better than hammering. I can't stand people to hammer bank sticks. Yeah, in. nothing you know, worse. You know, you set up the fish might be 20 yards out by the time you've got your three bank sticks in, they're 120 yards out. So a pod comes in perfectly handy for that. And this one, light speed pod, it's completely adjustable. It adjusts in length in height, front and back. Um, the actual buzzer bars lift up on their own, so if you were taking it to France, for example, you know, and you've got like rocks and stuff in the edge and you want a typical French setup with the tips up in the air, it's capable of that. Right. Or if you want a, a low down setup like this for normal English fishing, it's adjustable to that as well. Looks the part as well, everything's yeah. just spaced nicely, yeah. the rods look nice and neat on it, which it shouldn't matter, but it's very important these days, isn't <laughs> it? It is, yeah. Um, yeah, for everything to look, look nice, and it's very, very solid. 
you know, it's a, the way it's all braced once it's mm. up, it's completely rock solid. It it's nice a, and low as well, I like that. A lot of pods, is, you see, yeah. it's just a bit too high and yeah. you just think, well... Well, that lower sort of centre of gravity obviously makes it more, more stable. I mean, mm. the pods of old, if you've got a bite on your left hand or right hand rod, quite often they were going over, yes. weren't they? The whole Seen thing would tip yeah. over, but this is, you know, I mean, once they're braced against each other, it's absolutely rock solid. Excellent. So it's a very handy thing, you know, if you don't use a pod all the time to keep in the motor, and if you do use a pod all the time, you know, this is and a, maybe that's a, the one for a you. Good model, yeah. yeah sure. Just wound all four rods in to put fresh baits on and have a recast, and foul looked to fish on the way in, so I decided to drop one a little bit shorter and uh, add a bite almost straight away. So. Maybe they've moved in a bit closer and that's why I wouldn't get so much action. This one was only in there a couple of minutes and he was away. Unbelievable these, they fight so hard and then when they pop up they're half the size you were expecting them to be. Lovely job. There he is. Nice little mirror. Hopefully with a few more to follow. Seem to have found a few closer in now, so see what we can make of it. Right, Dave, there's lots of bivvies out there that claim to be quick erect, yeah. but I think you've got something here that takes that to the next level, am I yeah. right? Oh yeah, this is ultra fast. This is the Force 8 speed light, literally straight out of the bag, lift that up, hold there, flick him up into position. It's as simple as that. He's up. Wow. <clears throat> That's literally seconds. Oh, seconds, yeah. yeah. And then it's just a matter of pegging it out and tweaking it round, and it's done. Ground sheets in, doors on, porches on. Wow. In seconds. Okay, so once you've flicked it all into place, just these two just fold out. Plug into the hole at the bottom. That's just for your porch. Simple as that. There's a little clip on there just to tension it all up. One there. Brilliant. That's pretty impressive. What? So, 45 seconds, something yeah, like that? If that, it's just. Wow. It really is go. a faster rate yeah. shelter, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Cool. Um, so we'll peg it all out and uh, have a look at the door and the other features on it. Okay, so we've got the shelter up, Dave. Yep. Um, let's just have a look at a few of the features, shall we? Yep. Well, obviously it's got the built-in ground sheet, um, which is a big bonus. You know, a lot of people don't like creepy crawlies, and, and if you get rain seeping through your swim mm. and that, obviously it's all you're sort of encapsulated within there. It's got quite a small footprint, so it's, it's a good bivvy for tight swims. Um, if you're just doing quick overnighters, you're not bringing a lot of stuff with you. You know, it's perfect size for bed chair and a couple of bags. Um, it's surprising actually, because it looks like quite a small bit of kit. I mean, it is nice and compact, yeah, like you yeah. say, but actually when you do look inside, the bed chair is still going to go relatively yeah, far yeah. back in there, and there's, there's enough room for oh, a few you still, bags yeah, and all the rest is, of it, yeah, isn't You've still got enough room, and a lot of stuff goes under your bed anyway, so... Yeah, yeah no, it's big enough, but because of the, the sort of long, narrow footprint, you can get it in those smaller swims. Mm. Um, on the ground sheet, um, the door is actually sort of encapsulated within it, so that when you roll the door down, um, it all goes up into a separate right. section of ground Brilliant. sheet, which is handy, because you yeah. you're not trampling all over yeah. it. And, Much you know, tidier as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, mud and rain and whatever you inside. So that just pops open. And then on the door, you've got a two door option. You've got your clear door and your oh, green okay. door, you yeah. know, so you can put... Um, I notice it zips from the bottom up as yeah, well, yeah, well, doesn't it? Yes, that's, that's a handy little feature, really, because... Um, <laughs> although you've got your porch to stop any rain dripping into the front of it, you know, if the rain's absolutely driving in, you can sit on your bed chair, you know, with your head about this height, yeah. and looking Still out sort of a pillbox door, Perfect. the rain's bouncing off the front of it, um, nothing's coming in. Spot on, absolutely yeah. spot on. Yeah, that's safe for quick overnighters and 
tight swims and it, it's just the speed of it is the thing. You know, if you want something that's up like that, um, that's the kitty. Okay, put together a little bit of spod mix. I don't go mad with my spod mix. Cell boilies, break up a few of these. I like to put a bit of feed out in my mix rather than just sort of ground baits and stuff. A few part ones in there as well. I'll break up some more in a minute. Some response pellet. This breaks down fairly quickly. Gives off a nice oily, slick and a lot of flavour. Also, I'm going to add to that Cloud 9 high impact ground bait. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dampen the finish mix um, and that's going to help hold it in the spot and stop it all falling out on, on the way out there. Let's get him off there. This has also got a lot of feed and very strong smell. Last but not least, some crushed hemp bag and stick mix. I do like crushed hemp all over my trousers. And all I can do then is just mix all that up together. Add a bit of liquid, you know, just use water or um, a particle syrup or anything flavoured you like. I'm just going to put a little bit of water in there. It's not to make it into a wet ground bait, but just enough to make it a little bit sticky. As you can see that's still quite dry, but it's not dry enough to fly out of the spot on a cast. And there you go, simple as that. Okay, and you can see here when I load the spot, never load them right up to the end here. Always like two thirds fill it. Because what happens, <coughs> obviously to fly properly, you need the weight at the front. So if you load them right to the back, you're getting as much weight at the back as you are at the front, and then it starts to wobble. The back tries to overtake the front in flight. But if you always leave a gap at the top, that'll ensure that all the weight's at the front will end. I'm just gonna drop one in the margins here so you can see it coming out and see what it's gonna look like on that clear gravel out behind the marker. Over that nice light gravel. So when this goes in, it's gonna go in, obviously with more force than that, turn up, and you can see all of that trickling down. It's leaving that nice big cloud in the water there. Obviously any fish passing through those mid layers are gonna follow that down. But you can see now that like, each spot fill doesn't deliver a lot of feed, just the odd little bit of broken boilie, a few pellets, but there's a lot of attraction coming off of that. And that'll bring the fish in, get them grubbing around for more. Nice bright hook bait right in the middle of that. It's almost unfair to cast out. Right Dave, I know one of the things you've been working on recently is um, the new Hardcore Ranger luggage. Yeah. What's that all about then? Um, well basically it's a sort of a more upmarket, more robust Ranger gear. Um, sort of one of each product, but um, sort of up spec. You know, stronger zips, better material. Um, yeah, it's quite frustrating. You spend a lot of money on a decent rod bag and, and the zip's gone three months later and you know, you've got bungee clips around it. Absolutely. So, so I've sort of put a bit more time and effort into sourcing the right materials and just putting, you know, up spec in it really. Problem is on a rod holder in particular, if your main zip goes, that product is now completely useless. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't it? You can't bodge that, you can't get by. No, no, no. So I say these have got a lot stronger sort of heavy duty zips on. And it's it's more than just a rod bag really. It's 
you know what I'm like when I fish, I'm quite mobile. I like to turn up at a lake as well and I like to be fishing straight away. Mm. So with that in mind, this contains everything you need to be up and running. Um, yeah, obviously, <coughs> being a rod bag, you've got your rods in there, all set up, ready. Um, and they're individually padded um, so that they're not clattering together. Yep. You know, you're not going to lose a, a ring lining or anything. You know, everything's there, well protected, areas for spare rods, uh, marker rods, what have you. Um, so you can get three in with reels. You get three in with reels and then three, three in without. Yeah. Um, Which you won't necessarily need six, but three and two, you know. Yeah, but you, you just don't other, know, do you? Yeah, there's always bits and pieces you can put in there. And if you don't, you don't have to. Absolutely. You know, yeah, you don't, you have, don't have to, to use put that stuff space, in there because it's no. there, but it's there if, if you need it. Um, and on the outside, at the top here, we've got a pouch, and this will take like your bank sticks. Um, you know, if you use buzzer bars, your buzzer bars will slide straight in there, so you're not rummaging and around in yeah. anything else. It's not like inside your barra stuff, you haven't got to unload your barra to get to anything. And um, that all goes in there. You've got a bigger pouch here, which you can put slings, landing nets, you know, sort of, sort of the floating retainer sling and a landing net in there, or a sack or, you know, whatever you want. Then should you gather fish straight away, you're sort of ready to go. We've even put this little pouch on the side. This is a handy little idea. Pop your leads in, yeah, spare brilliant. leads, because that's always brilliant. the one, isn't it? Yeah, you, you know, when you, you pack up, you take your leads off so they don't damage your rods. You don't think about that. You get there, you put everything up, you think, oh no, the leads are right in the bottom. Uh, the number of times I've had leads just rattling around yeah. in the car, because you get in the car at the end of a session. That's it. Oh, always in the pocket. What do you do with them? Yeah. And also, That's you can nice. chuck a baiting needle with maybe three pop-ups already on yeah. it in there, and a yeah. little strip of hair stops or something. You know, anything, just the little bits you need. So you literally there, can just get fishing you, straight away. You can away. just take this straight off yeah. the top of the barra and be fishing. Because you're not always going to end up where you start. No. You know, you might just want to get angling, and after a few minutes, you think, oh, actually, no, I want to be over there. You don't want to have to repack the barra. So everything you need for, to, to get yourself going, it's all inside there. Brilliant. Right, Dave, I can't help notice that one of the themes in the hardcore luggage range is that one bag fits all, if you like. You've yeah. got everything in there. Yeah. Um, I believe this is the hardcore heavy duty carry all. Yeah. And it looks, well, not a beast actually, it's quite compact, but yeah, it yeah, looks it's like it's going to take quite a bit of kit. The idea of this for me is that I can get all of my other stuff in it, my fishing stuff, my spare clothes, anything else. You know, I'll take this, the food bag, a bait bag, and the rod bag. Mm. Pretty much covers everything. Um, the inside compartment is quite huge. You know, you can get anything you need in there. Um, it's, it's all deceptive, actually, because from the outside it yeah. looks like just the right size, but then you obviously you come inside yeah. and it, it's, it's a big old Oh, yeah, I mean, I can get all my tackle bags in there, you know, uh, binoculars even. This, which is a, one of the Thermotex jackets, you know, that packs down. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. that, that comes out and that's a full protection system jacket. Right. Um, but it also comes with loads of pockets, ev pockets everywhere. So, you know, if you're a tidier person than I am and you want everything in the right place, then there's compartments. You know, once, once you've got a home for everything, there's plenty of room to slide it all in. Uh, there's even big pockets on the top here. You know, for iPads, phones, stuff like that, you want to be protected because obviously you've got this hard top. So, you know, anything like electrical stuff, put it under there and it's yeah. protected from the, the, the hard top. Um, and on the outside, the pockets all the way around. And what I tend to do is I pack on the outside pockets stuff that I'm going to need straight away, you know, rather than having to delve through because I'm, I'm not the tidiest of anglers. Everything right. gets thrown in there. But yeah. say, for example, I know that it always in this pocket. It'd be my sort of normal tackle stuff that I might need mm. straight away. So it's instant access. Instant you access the on you the outside of it without through. going rummaging yeah. on the inside. But then over the course of the session, the things that you are going to need yeah. are obviously still in there. Yeah, so. absolutely. And, and also, like, yeah, I've got that's always pop ups, mm. you know, always mm. the right hand pocket, whatever I use, right hand pocket is pop up. So even in the dark, I can find my pop ups. I know Brilliant. where everything is. Um, and like I say, it's just a big, spacious, very strong very well-made bag that's got room for everything basically mm. you know i don't think i'd ever take anything the amount of stuff fishing that wouldn't fit in there right um now it's on the top as well with obviously the protection there but also that could perhaps double up as a bit of a storage area bivy table i, I use it as a bivy table here yeah, yeah. all the time i know you like yeah. to read when you're on the banks so you've got a, yeah. a book or more recently a kindle or something i have yeah 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 i'm mad for my kindle yeah absolutely and i yeah quite often once i'm set up somewhere like this now 
the tackle box will stay on the, you know, the mm. tackle pouch will stay on the top mm. there, and maybe a pot of pop ups and baiting needle and scissors. So, so you don't need to keep going in yeah, and out of the yeah, bag anyway. Yeah, yeah, just like a table so. the bits, the bits you need. Brilliant. I don't know. We were chatting before about um, most anglers these days seem to use a barrow, but even so, occasionally you're going to have to carry luggage, even if it's just from the yeah. car into the house. Yeah. But sometimes further. So. You know, it's still important to note that nice big chunky straps. Yeah, have a shoulder yeah, strap. oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. We put a lot of thought into into making sure that it was comfortable. Although, like you say, generally people use barrows, but it was, if you had to carry it, it is comfortable to carry. I mean, even somewhere like here, um, you know, you, you can park. I mean, what's that? Sort of 30 meters mm. away from your swim, but you're not going to set up a barrow to do 30 of meters. Of course not. No, you, know? but you still have to get so, your gear. So you've you got to get it here. Swim. And so yeah. if you've got something that's only made for a barrow. You're stuffed a little bit, mm. you know, to get it that, you know, and sometimes over fences and ditches and dales or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, yes, it, it's, it's a very comfortable product to carry, even when it's fully loaded. Super, I like that, I like yeah. that a lot. Yeah, good bit of care. That recast of all the rods seems to have done the trick anyway. The two bites in very short order. Sometimes just a three fresh baits and slightly different spots can be all it takes. It feels like a mid-20 and then you get them in the net and they're mid-doubles. That's not a bad thing, it's, it's all good sport.